Okay, this is a video about how I flat artwork before coloring it. Um, in this example, this is the comic book page I did recently, and this is the finished page. If you see, I, if I turn off the coloring layer, underneath, every object is basically flatted in just a solid color. And you can see that the relationship between the flat colors and the final color um, isn't exactly... Uh, they're not really the same. Um, there are some similarities. But I, the reason is when I'm flatting, I don't like to pay a whole lot of attention to what colors I'm using uh, because I just want it to be a very quick process so that when I have my flats layer, I can just get the wand tool out and just quickly make a selection of the area I want to paint. So if I were to paint her face, um, I would normally make a duplicate of my flats channel here. <clears throat> Get my wand tool out, make a selection, hide my selection by pressing Control H or Command H. Get the airbrush out and do some coloring just like that. Um, so it makes it very quick and easy because I don't have to worry about painting inside the lines. It's a pretty common technique in um, comic book coloring. So I have an example here, a very simple example for a children's book I'm working on. And I will show you real quick my process. First thing I do is make a flat layer. And I normally turn my, my ink layer down um, you know, to around 70%. This allows me to see through the layer, obviously, so that I can, and I'll show you, um, I can see where my colored shapes are hitting the line art. Because you want the, lo the flat shapes to overlap the line art just a little bit. All right. Um, and another thing I've learned when doing this is that I use the pencil tool instead of the brush tool. And I'll show you, I'll show you real quick why that is. Um, for me, the, best, the, the quickest way to do this is to draw a shape and then switch to the paint bucket tool real quick and fill it in. The problem with using the brush tool is around the edges of the brush tool it has these 50% pixels. So whenever you use the paint bucket tool, it, tr it doesn't quite hit it, and it leaves this like ugly looking ghost area around it. Uh, if you use the pencil tool, it doesn't do that. Now the pencil tool, before, before flatting artwork, I never even really used it much at all, because you can see it has really jagged edges. Um, all of these edges are going to be hidden behind the line art anyway, so there's really no reason uh, to worry about that. All right, so let's take a step backward. <clears throat> All right, now one rule of thumb that I always do is start with big, the big shapes first and then move down to the little ones because you can start, as you progress, you can start to use the selections of your big shapes to help you kind of mask off areas to quickly put in the, uh, the small shapes. So in this case, since there's an obvious character here, I'm going to keep the background and the character on a separate layer. So we'll just fill background with the blue there. Then let's get his skin tone. Oh yeah, and another thing, um, I like to have a swatch palette out that I pull from all the time. The reason is it just makes it a lot quicker rather than going into the color picker every time and picking a color randomly. Oh yeah, you know what? Before I go too far with that, there will be some times when you can use the magic wand tool on your line art. Usually with my line art, there are a lot of gaps in it, so it's not 
Um, it's not often that I get to use it. In this case, I'm pretty sure this character is all enclosed. So let's select, oop, make sure the contiguous is checked, and select anywhere in the background. And we'll add that and add that. And looks like we got a problem with this shirt here. Must be a, there's obviously a hole in the line arc somewhere. <clears throat> Actually, it'd probably be easier to go back and just close that hole up. Where are you? And I'm going to be making another video about uh, about using Manga Studio 5 for flatting because um, it's just it's a very superior program in that aspect. The uh, the paint bucket and the selection tools are a lot smarter and a lot more customizable. All right, there. All right, ah, so there was our hole. There you are. Let's try it again. All right, so once you've done that, then you can move back to your flats layer. I have two actions set up. Um, one action will take the opposite of my selection, invert it, and then contract the selection by two pixels, uh, and then fill it. So let's just do that manually here. Invert, I invert the selection first, and then I'll minus, contract the selection by two pixels. That way, you can see if you zoom in, the uh, the dots or the, the marching ants here are inside the line art, which is what we want. Um, and then we're going to fill that with the skin color there. And looks like got most of it right there. Okay, cool. All right. Now, in this case, I'm just going to lock the transparency of this layer so we don't have to worry about making a selection or getting inside um, or going outside the lines. So if you see here on the layer palette, you can just click lock transparency, which is something I do a lot. Um, all right. Now, once I start, you'll see that if I want to color this whole bandana thing, I don't need to do this. I don't need to draw a line around everything. I just basically need to like kind of wall off the areas where the color might flow into. So I've walled those off and I click just like that. Let's give them a purple shirt. And again, not paying a whole lot of attention to what the actual final colors are going to be. Just want them all to be pretty different from each other. They don't have to be so different that it's painful to look at, but different enough. And I got, you can see I got his shoes, but I'm not real worried about that right now. Here, I don't have to do anything because the color is already walled off. So I can just select a brown and go in there like that. Shoes, wall off the area. And here I have the, the belt and the shoes the exact same color. Um, not really a big deal because they're far enough away that when I do make a selection, uh, they're not going to interfere with each other.
All right, and then we just got to do this pull. Just, just doing the walls here. There. All right, so we got all the guy. And for the background, in this case, I don't really have a background really drawn in, so I'll probably just take the lasso tool and just temporarily do something like this. Fill that with green. Turn our line art back up, and that's it. So now what I would do, oh man, we forgot the polka dots, holy heck. This is an easy one to use the lasso tool with, so we'll just go select the line art layer. I thought it was gonna be easy. Select them all. Remember to expand the selection and we'll color them. There. Nice. Alright, and then the way I would start to color this thing is make a copy of this layer. I always lock the flats layer because otherwise I'm going to paint all over it by accident. Um, then on this layer here, get out my big airbrush. Make a selection on the shirt. Hide it by Command H. Select the flats layer. And there you go. It makes a lot, it makes a heck of a lot easier to start coloring and and that kind of thing. Great. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.